Hi everyone, welcome back to our Red Blossom Tea channel. Today we'll look at poars. Poars are tea leaves that are picked and they're heat roasted straight away, like making green tea, but then they're left to age. The process of crafting poir can be accelerated or it can be natural. So if it's natural, after the leaves are heat roasted, they look like this. This is a Mao Ta. Mao Ta is the raw poir that's really popular here in the US. People do drink it in this form, but they're really meant to be aged. Um, in the Chinese culture, we don't drink Mao Ta because it's considered very astringent and very acidic still. So um, it's not uh, ideal for settling the stomach yet. Um, it's similar to having a freshly made bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon and Zinfandel. You wouldn't want to drink it straight away. It needs to rest. So we would keep it so that it ages further. If it has gone through some accelerated fermentation or if it's even left in a hotter environment, the leaves would age by looking like this. So it'll turn from the raw leaves that are dehydrated to a golden color. So when it comes to pours, um, what we look at at Red Blossom is pours are ready to drink. So this is the Wild Leaf 2003 Meng Hai. So there are some baby tips, some mature leaves. Because it's a wild leaf, there's an uneven distribution of leaves in there. And then of course, these are Tuo Ta. Tuo Ta is quite popular when um, people visit China. This is the first thing you would buy either at a gift shop or um, even in grocery stores nowadays, they'll sell Tuo Ta's. Um, traditionally, these are pretty rustic. It's the leftover bits that's pressed together into this knob. And you would unwrap the paper and use one per serving. Um, it's a little more astringent because it is um, not, not quite the finest grade, but it's a, a good introductory one. Uh, we also have the baby tips of Emperor Poir that we have pressed into a cake like this. So our Emperor 2008 cake is consists of only baby tips pressed together. And there's about 100 grams in here. So this is a nice, um, nice cake to have for about three to four weeks supply. I usually drink it a little bit quicker if we have a tea like this with a heavier meal, so you would make it a little stronger. But to make pu'er, um, traditionally it is best to use a yixing pot like this. But today I will start making in a gaiwan first. So I think a lot of people like pu'er, though they're not familiar with it. They like the idea of drinking something like uh, aged tea because it's a little bit lower in caffeine. Um, but I would say when you're trying out pu'er cakes, it is best to make everything in a non-porous vessel first. So we're going to use a gaiwan because this non-porous vessel does not take on the flavor of what you brew it in. Even if you're accustomed to drinking pour, don't start out adding brand new pours that you're not familiar with into your yixing pot. Because once this pot takes on the flavor of that particular tea, for example, if it was an artificially flavored chocolate pour or something, then you would have ruined your yixing pot a little bit. But we could talk about yixing um, in a later video. For now, let's taste the um, 2003 Meng Hai. So this is a wild leaf pour. I'm going to use about a teaspoon. This has so much flavor, we can steep it several times. The water I'm using is boiling hot. For aged teas like this, we do recommend you do a quick rinse, but you don't have to because our pours, we have tested the teas for pesticide residue, and they're also tested for heavy metals. But for this quick rinse, it's personal preference, and it does wake up the leaves a little bit. Now, in San Francisco, because our weather is quite cool and we don't have high humidity, these pours do not taste funky, like an like a aged um, muskiness to it. These pours are pretty um, rich and dark, but they have the natural kind of 
oakiness of a nice Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, it does not have that kind of blue cheese funk. So when you're brewing teas like this, it's nice to be able to check for that first. Um, there are actually a lot of people who prefer that more earthiness, muskiness, and those are quite common if the pu'er is kept in a hot and humid area. So I used to live in Hong Kong, and most pu'er in, in Hong Kong are pretty dark and musky. It's difficult for me to drink something like that because I am very sensitive to mold, but people who are accustomed to that style of pu'er are okay with it because their system is used to it. For our pores, it's also not dark um, soy sauce like, particularly the wild leaf ones. So the color of the brew is uh, a rich amber color. In terms of flavor, it's very rich and thick. It's a little bit oaky. I like it because I do like Zinfandels and Cabernet Sauvignons for wines. So it's a little bit heavier, ideal for heavier dishes. So um, when you're tasting teas like this, first figure out what the tea tastes like, and then you could brew it a little bit longer and add more leaves if you like it a little stronger as well. We're going to compare this wild leaf with a cultivated one. So the Emperor Poir, the baby tips, is a cultivated one. Um, I do really like this tea, so I will brew it in the pot that is seasoned for Poirs. Uh, for this particular one, because it's the young baby tips, we would use a little more tea. This is very lightweight, it's not quite as dense. I've had this before many times, so that's why I'm adding now to my Yuxing pot. Yuxing is ideal for making teas like this because Yuxing retains heat very well. It um, retains heat and it also allows you to brew your tea a little bit quicker. So for some of the stronger um, tea drinkers, we prefer to use a little more leaves and steep it a little longer. Uh, my late dad used to brew it in a giant pot and he used to let it sit for so long that the color of the poor tea comes out like dark soy sauce. But that's how Cantonese would drink it because we prefer something a little bit thicker and stronger. But when you're making a poor like this, it's ideal to make it in a smaller vessel at first. Use it a few times so then you could figure out how, the strengths you like. For this emperor pour, this is a cook pour, which means the leaves are harvested, heat roasted like green tea, and they're piled up into a mount to go through an accelerated fermentation. Of course, this process is also a control environment. So it is in a, it's done in a food facility, and the humidity, the um, temperature, the roasting, all of that is controlled. So this color is also very light amber-like. Okay. So the color difference when we brew um, the pores for just one minute is somewhat similar, but the wild leaf is a larger leaf and it's more intense and complex in flavor. So the color of the brew is a bit darker. And what's amazing about pour is if it's a good quality pour, we can brew it several times and re it's really the later infusions that would open up. So for this emperor pour, it has its own natural kind of chocolate mint notes. For me, um, I would put a, a, a tablespoon of this into a big thermos. Sometimes later in the evening, because this is lower in caffeine, um, I would drink it after dinner. This helps settle my stomach a bit. In general, pour is one that is virtually caffeine, decaffeinated. So it's something that you could brew at night as well. 
though many of our customers do like to drink it early in the morning. But the ideal time to drink pu'er is when you're having dim sum. So when we have dian xing, these are the traditional snacks. These are bao zi. So this one has um, egg custard in it. This one is savory and it has cabbage and pork. I've also made um, a chocolate souffle cake from Bill Granger's recipe um, using Valrhona chocolate. So we've actually um, done a little bit of a East and West kind of snacks. But for poor, most of the poor leaves can be brewed so many times, it's nice to use the leftover leaves to make tea eggs again. So when you're making tea eggs, you could use the leftover leaves of poor, add it to your batch of the, the, the pot while you're letting the eggs soak. And this will really allow you to get that web um, on the egg whites. And then of course we have some of the sesame dumplings. The sesame dumplings have also a sesame cream in the middle. So I've actually used the pu'er tea in the bowl and then we're adding the boiled dumplings into it and have it as a sweet soup. If you find this video helpful, please feel free to subscribe to our Red Blossom Tea channel. And then of course, if you want to read more about different types of pu'ers, you could visit our website, redblossomtea.com.